Amen. Let's rise together wherever you are as we make our declaration of excellence in this year of excellence. Are you ready? Say with me, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. The Lord my God causes the righteous to shine forth as the sun. His awesome hand has formed me. His creative spirit inspires my mind. He skillfully guides my hands. Therefore, I boldly declare, I am set apart for excellence. The ruler of the universe has exalted my horn among the nations. He sets my feet on high. In his strength, I rise. By faith, I press forward towards the prize of my highest calling. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. He is the vine. I am the branch. In him I abide. In him I blossom. As it is written, God, who commanded light out of darkness, has shown his light in our hearts. We have his treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. In this year, I commit to excellence. I commit to exceptionalism. I commit to do the extraordinary. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen and amen and amen. And you may be seated in God's presence. And it's great to have you in the house of God. For those of you who managed to come in today for uh, in-person service, uh, you have uh, prevailed over the rain. Um, it's been quite an interesting two days here in Accra uh, with the rain uh, pouring incessantly. Uh, this is supposed to be the minor rainy season, but it looks like the major has moved to the minor and the minor has moved to the major. Uh, because during the main rainy season, we didn't have as much rain as we are having now. But Thank God for all of you who came. If you were able to come in person, clap for yourself. And for all of you at home, it's great to have you worshiping with us this morning as we consider the word of God and as we walk in the victory that Christ Jesus has given to us. I'm doing part two of my message, which I began uh, last week, Faith to Become. This is part two, the concluding part of my two-part message, faith to become. Last week, we looked at Abraham, we looked at his journey of faith, and we established that Abraham exercised faith not just to receive a son, but to become a father of many nations, that God is not just interested in giving us things, he wants us to become something and uh, I trust that each one of us will become what God says we are, and we will become whom he says we are, and we will rise to the place that he has appointed for us. Today, we will look at a verse we've looked at a few times, especially this year under our theme of excellence, and it's in a chapter of the New Testament that sets out what I consider to be the mindset of the Apostle Paul, Philippians chapter 3. And uh, I will quote only one verse from that chapter. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 12. <clears throat> and this is what it says. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ has also laid hold of me. That one verse captures very clearly the mindset of the Apostle Paul. He tells us how he views life in relation to his purpose here on earth. And we can sum up uh, the statement of Paul or, or his mindset in two statements. The first statement is Christ has made me whom 
I should be. Christ has made me whom I should be. And how do we come to that conclusion? Because it says that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. What Paul is saying is that there is something that Christ has, has made me. Christ has made me something. And the picture here that I want you to have in your mind is that Christ has taken hold of you and he says, this is what I have made you. And that's what Paul is saying. Christ has laid hold of me. It, that, that phrase laid hold could also be interpreted as, interpreted as arrested me. He has caught me and made me something. Christ has laid hold of me. So what Paul is saying is Christ has made me whom I should be. The second statement uh, is that I must become whom Christ has made me. Christ has made me something. I must become that. So Paul says, I press on that I may lay hold of it. He has laid hold of me and I must lay hold of what he has laid off. Lay hold of. So his determination in life, his push in life was not to get something but become something or become the person that God says he is. And that should be our endeavor. We must know what we have been made and we must become what we have been made. God is not just interested in giving us things. Yes, he gives us things, but he wants us to become something. For Abraham, he had to become the father of many nations. And for Paul, he says, I must become what Christ has laid hold of me. So we see that Paul's faith was like that of Abraham. Both of them wanted to become. The faith to become. When we have the faith to become, we can say that if Christ has made me whole, I must be whole. I must become a whole person. If Christ has made me triumphant, I must become triumphant. If Christ has made me a sweet aroma, I must become a sweet aroma. If Christ has made me more than a conqueror, I must become more than a conqueror. That's what Paul is saying. Whatever he has laid hold of me is what I want to be. It is the faith to become. And in God's mind, there is something he has made you and you must become that. You must push. You must press on. You must focus. You must work hard to become whom you have been made to become. Because what we become determines what we do. What I become determines what I do. What I am or whom I am determines how I act. Who I am determines what I have. Now with that in mind, having established that foundation, I want to take us to a statement in the Psalms that Jesus Christ referred to and the apostles referred to a couple of times. And it's in Psalm 118. Psalm 118. For those of you who know your Psalms well, you know that uh, that is just before Psalm 119, which is the longest Psalm in the Bible. Psalm 118 is part of what is known as the Hallel Psalms. The Hallel Psalms were Psalms of praise, and they start from Psalm 113 to Psalm 118. And Psalm 118 is the end of the Hallel Psalms. And uh, the passage, when you read the Psalms, normally you, you would get to know whom God used to write, whether it is David or the sons of Asaph or somebody else or the Asaph himself, sons of Korah. 
But this psalm, Psalm 118, does not declare who wrote it. Uh, some believe that it was written by David, and I tend to believe that it was written by David because the language is very Davidic. Uh, and, and some believe that David wrote this psalm when he was ascending to the throne as king. And others think that this psalm was written when Israel or Judah had returned from exile. But whether it was David or, or it was written later, the truth is the Holy Spirit inspired it and it has relevance to us. And the whole of Psalm 118 is important, but I'm just going to focus on verses 21 to 23. Verses 21 to 23, and uh, that's where I'm going to focus. And, but before I read verses 21 and 23, I'm just going to read pick selections of the psalm to give us a certain context so that verses 21 and 23 to 23 make sense for us. So I will be reading uh, randomly certain parts of Psalm 118. You don't need to turn to it. Just listen to me. Verse 5 of Psalm 118 says, I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. Verse 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Verse 10, all nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, Lord, I will destroy them. Verse 13 and 14, you pushed me violently that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. Now with that in mind, I read to you where I'm focusing verses 21 and to 23. I will praise you for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has Become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. I will read the verse 22 again. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Now, if you read Psalm 118 a bit closely from verses 10, 11, and 12, he speaks about being surrounded on every side. So, and then in verse 13, he says, you push me violently. So, I want you to get the impression of what is going on. The psalmist says, I've been surrounded on every side. And then the next verse, he says, you push me violently. So it is obvious the people who have surrounded him are the one who pushed him violently that he might fall. And then in verse 22, he says, the stone which the builders rejected have become the cornerstone. So when he talks about the rejection in the context of the psalm, it's not a casual rejection, it's a Rejection based on verse 13. You push me violently. So the rejection is a violent rejection. It, it, it gives the impression of somebody who has, has been violently rejected. Now what is a violent rejection? A violent rejection is like when somebody puts something very nasty, slimy, in your hand. I don't want to mention any name, but you are there and somebody just put something gooey, sticky, slap, sm slimy in your hand. You know what you do? You just throw it away. So that is the impression that he wants us to have. The stone which the builders rejected was not just put aside quietly. It was pushed aside violently. So the psalmist is saying that I have been rejected and I have been rejected violently. I don't know about you. There are people who have been rejected 
and have been rejected violently, but you are about to become something. And, and, and if we look closely at the psalm in the verse 22, I want you to take note of two things. The stone, somebody say the stone. The stone represents an individual seeking to find his place. Because a stone cannot be a building, it must be joined to others to become a building. But he says, stone, the psalmist says, I am a stone. I am looking for my place. I need to play a role. I need to become significant. And there are many of us who feel like a stone. We need to connect to something. We need to achieve something. We need to become something. But then the stone is dealing with the builder or the builders. The builders there refer to those who determine which stone is suitable. The builder is the one who determines, he selects the stone. They have an idea of what is right for a purpose and what is not right for a purpose. Their opinion will either give you value or devalue you. And the builder determines where to place the stone. Now I want you to get this. The psalmist sees himself as the stone. And he says that this who I am is subject to a builder. And the builder determines whether I have value or not. Whether I fit or not. The builder can represent anything. The builder could be the family system, could be the school system, could be the workplace, could be a political system. The stone is looking for relevance, but the builder rejected him. The stone wants to be part of a building, but the builder rejected him. In other words, the person who has power to determine your usefulness threw you away. The person who has power to determine whether you fit or not looked at you and said, you don't fit and violently threw you away. Now, there are all kinds of builders in life. There are what I call the external builders and the internal. The external are those who are threatened by your gift. Those who measure you wrongly. And those who have already determined that their favorite should win and so they reject you because they have already fixed the winner. And sometimes it's not just the external who is rejecting us, but we ourselves can do things to reject ourselves. We don't give of our best. We don't value what we have. And sometimes we're not ready yet. So if you look at the passage, there are two kinds of stones. The first one is what I'm talking about, the rejected stone. And that rejection comes from the builder. The stone is rejected in the building process. Not considered fit to be used. You know, life has a way of discarding people. Sometimes you go to school and, and, and the school system discards you. you. You have no value. The school system spews you out. Sometimes even in your family, you can be discarded. You have no view. Amongst your friends, you can be discarded, violently thrown away. It is the stone that has been rejected. And many of you are stones that have been rejected. But that is not the same, the only stone here. There is also the elevated stone. The elevated stone is the doing of the Lord. Now, when you look at the psalm, something very interesting is there. It says, the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. 
Now, the build, builder who rejects the stone cannot be the same builder who makes the stone a cornerstone. Because the rejecter is not the acceptor. So, the, the rejecter takes the stone and says, yes, you are not fit, and throws it away. You cannot be part of what I am building. And then you look back and you see that this same stone that has been rejected is now the chief cornerstone in the same building where he was rejected. So somebody took what was rejected, brought it back, and without the builder's permission, positioned the stone in a place of advantage. The stone rejected by men is now set as a cornerstone. The word cornerstone is very interesting in the Hebrew. It, it can be interpreted in two ways. First, it can be interested, in, interpreted as the foundation stone, a cornerstone. But that's not the only interpretation. Sometimes it is translated as the capstone. That means after all the building has been put together, it is the stone that is put on the building to showcase the building. So when you look at the building, the first thing you see is the capstone. And I believe that is what the text has in mind. It is not a foundation that is hidden, but a capstone that is obvious. One moment violently thrown away, the next moment placed in a place of prominence. And then the psalmist says, this is the doing of the Lord and it is marvelous in our sight. Somebody who was rejected is about to become. You will become the capstone, the advertisement, the signboard, the measure of success because God took you and placed you. The stone that the builders rejected will become. Somebody say, I will become. Say, I will become. When God takes you, whether man rejected you or man threw you away, God will place you. When you become whom God says you are, he will place you where he says you will be. It is the faith to become a cornerstone. And today, I just brought you a very simple word. That God has appointed you to be a cornerstone. God has appointed you to be a cornerstone. Somebody say, I will become a cornerstone. A cornerstone is a stone that is set in prominence on top of of the building. For you to become that, we have to be like Abraham. Consider not the words and the actions of rejection against you. You will hear words of rejection. People will dismiss you, but don't dismiss yourself. Your school may dismiss you. You may fail your exam. You may find other people who get all the right passes. And you get all the right failures. But you must not consider that. Because Abraham did not consider his dead body or the deadness of Sarah's womb. He considered the faithfulness of God. Faith to become starts when you don't allow what people reject of you to get inside you. Because there are people from rejected families. There are people from rejected backgrounds. There are people whom everybody takes a look at and say they are good for nothing. If anybody ever told you you are good for nothing, 
I am here to announce to you, you will become the cornerstone. If somebody said you were a failure, you will become a cornerstone. If life rejected you, you are about to become a cornerstone. The stone which the builder rejected, the stone that the school rejected, the teacher rejected, the parents rejected, the brothers rejected, the friends rejected. Everybody looked at you and said, you are not it, but you are about to become God's signboard, God's advertisement, God's display. And when, when people would look at you, they would say, how was the man who was rejected able to stand in this place? And you can only answer in one way. This is the doing of the Lord and it is marvelous in our eyes. May God do a marvelous work in your life. May God do something marvelous in your life that when people look at you, the only explanation they can give is this is God. This is God. They cannot praise a builder. They cannot praise a builder. They cannot praise your, praise your school. They cannot praise your teacher. They cannot praise the, the government. They cannot praise the political system. They cannot praise somebody who is powerful. The only thing they can say is this one was rejected. And this one is God's signboard. The only way this could ever happen is the doing of the Lord and it is marvelous in our sight. Somebody is about to come from rejection to become the cornerstone. Somebody is going to be pulled out from rejection and set in place. Consider not the words of rejection. They are the words of man. Man. Consider not those who threw you away. They are human beings. They are not God. Consider not those who said you can amount to nothing because they are just people. The builder may reject you. The builders may think you have no value. For some of you, even your own father said you are nothing. You have no value. Your mother said you had no value. Your husband said you had no value. Your wife said you are useless. But God is going to take the stone that was rejected by the builder and put it in the place of rejection as a cornerstone. He will bypass the builders and set you up. I said God will bypass the builders and set you up. God will bypass the builders and set you up. God will bypass the builders and set you up. Somebody say, I will become... A cornerstone. You will become it. And you must have faith to become a cornerstone. You must have faith that God will make me that which Christ has already established me to be. He says, I am the head and not the tail. And I'm going to be the head and not the tail. The Bible is full of cornerstones. Who started as rejection. Joseph. Was rejected because of his dreams. But he became the cornerstone of his family. The stone his brothers rejected. Became the chief cornerstone. May you become the stone. That your brothers and your sisters. And your classmates rejected. Joseph rejected. Because he dreamt too much. He was a daydreamer. Thinking big. He was ambitious. And sometimes people will reject you because your mouth is too big. Your vision is too big. You think you are better than other people so they throw you away. But Joseph became the cornerstone for his family. Moses was rejected because he didn't belong. He didn't belong to Pharaoh's house. And the Hebrews didn't also accept him. He was a man who didn't have a location. He was rejected as a ruler and as a judge. But he became the cornerstone of his nation. The people who rejected him. The builders rejected him. But the Lord 
took him and made him the cornerstone. And when he returned, they had to accept him. He had been made God, God's cornerstone. Maybe your nation has rejected you, but God will make you the cornerstone. Jesus Christ was rejected by the world, but he became the cornerstone of the world. Can you imagine the Bible says he came to his own and his own did not receive him. Jesus rejected the Pharisees. Great religious leaders said he has no place. Sadducees, great intellectuals, no place. The scribes, great writers, no place. The ordinary people, no place. But God has made him the name that is above every name. Rejected by the builders, but placed by God. So I came here just to encourage someone. The builders have rejected you, but God will place you. The people who think they control destinies, they have rejected you. But God will establish you. Consider not their rejection. Consider not the violence with which they treat you. Consider not the words of abuse and insult that they mention when your name comes up. Because God is about to make you the cornerstone. Not hidden in the foundation but displayed at the top of the building. The capstone, the stone which they didn't want anybody to see is now God's advertisement. Somebody say, I will become God's cornerstone. Or so say it like you believe it. Say, I will become God's cornerstone in my family. In my workplace, among my schoolmates, among my friends, in my nation, in my world, I will become a capstone, a cornerstone to the glory of God. My life will be a testimony to the nations of the world. They would see me. And say, this is the doing of the Lord. And in, it is marvelous in our eyes. May God decorate you and showcase you to the world. May God amplify you and make you a testimony. May the Lord pick you from rejection and place you in honor in Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Oh, shout amen. Amen. Say, I'm a cornerstone. I'm a cornerstone to my generation. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you for every life that feels rejected. And we pray that they will find their place in Christ Jesus, the chief cornerstone, the Savior. The Redeemer. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I just want to lead you briefly to pray with me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I accept you. You were rejected by men, but I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God, that God raised you from the dead, and I declare you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for accepting me. In your name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you for listening. And I trust God for all of you who are watching that the Lord will place you as a cornerstone wherever you are. The band will minister now as we give our second offering.